Welcome. In this video, we'll see some of the remaining branching instructions present in 8051. So first instruction is DJNZ R3 comma next. So the meaning of this instruction is decrement the value present in R3 register and if this value is not equal to zero, then jump to the location next. So uh, this is actually used for generating loops. So let me put some value in R3 register. So let it be 0, 2. Okay. So if I execute this instruction, the contents of R3 will be decremented by 1 and it will be checked whether it is equal to 0 or not. If it is not equal to 0, then it will jump to the label next. So I will execute this instruction. So the value in R3 has become 1. Now that value is not equal to 0. So again, it has jumped at the same location so the next label is written over here so that's why it has jumped the to the same location now if i again execute that instruction the value in r3 becomes zero and since it is equal to zero the program counter has not jumped to the label next instead of that it has come out of that loop it is now going to execute the next instruction so this instruction is of register addressing mode here the R3 register is used and this instruction is of two bytes. One byte is required for the opcode and one byte is required for storing the address of the jump location. Next instruction is DJNZ 20 hex comma next one. So the meaning of this instruction is that the contents of 20 hex location will be decremented by one and it will be checked whether it is equal to zero or not. If it is not equal to zero, then the program counter will jump to the label next one. Whereas if the value present at 20 hex location becomes equal to zero, then it will execute the next instruction instead of jumping to the label next one. So let me put some value at 20 hex location. So here let me 0 3 hex. So now let me execute this instruction. So if I execute that instruction, the value here will be decremented by one. And since it is not equal to zero, it has jumped to the label next one. So next one is over here. So this instruction is of direct addressing mode here. 20 hex is the direct address of RAM memory location. And using this instruction, we can create again loops for representing a for loop in C language. This instruction requires two bytes for representation. One byte is required for storing the opcode and one byte is required for storing the direct address. Next instruction is NOP. So NOP is called as no operation. So when this instruction is executed, nothing happens. It is just used to kill the time. So if I want to have very small delay in my program, then I can execute such NOP instructions. So this instruction uh, requires only one byte for its representation and that is required for the opcode of the instruction and the last instruction that is available is reti so this reti instruction is used to return from interrupt service routine so whenever an interrupt occurs the program counter jumps to a, a specified vector address of that particular interrupt and it executes the instructions present in that interrupt service routine the last instruction in that interrupt service routine should be RETI. So this instruction is used to come back to the main program from the interrupt service routine. So whenever an interrupt service routine begins its execution, the address present in the program counter is pushed onto the stack and the other interrupts are discarded. And whenever the interrupt service routine completes its execution, final instruction is RETI. So whenever this instruction is executed, the other interrupts are again accepted and the address present in the stack is popped out to the program counter and program counter returns to the main program where it was interrupted. So this is how the RETI instruction works. So this RETI instruction is of one byte, one byte is required for its opcode. Now whenever we are using interrupts in our program, we have to write the program in a different way. So the starting address should be always ORG00 hex. But after this, as you can see over here, this 
address is a vector address of timer one so whenever the interrupt related to timer one occurs the program counter will jump to this address location and if i write the uh, program a long program after 00 hex so it there is a chance that this program may overwrite the 1b hex location so this sh should not happen so instead of that we have to write the program in such a way that it should not overwrite the interrupt vector address locations so uh, generally after this org 00 hex we have to write a instruction like uh, s jump and some address where we want to write the program for example 50 hex so it is far away from the vector addresses and the main program should start with org 50 hex so this is how the standard program is written whenever you are using interrupts in the system the first instruction is s jump 50 hex so it will directly jump to this location 50 hex and at this location we can write the interrupt service routine which is less than 50 hex so that is about the instructions available in 8051 in the next video we'll start with the detailed study of the internal peripherals available in 8051 for more information here you can log on to the website given in the description of this video thank you